Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us about following our own desires and following our intellect when it goes against what Allah has decreed. Our brain obviously is one of the biggest gifts we have in terms of the body, parts of the body. The brain is one of the biggest gifts we have. We need to use that brain to put Allah's commands into practice, not to challenge them. So those who challenge the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and dispute with them, Allah says in the Quran, we won't guide them. Because they are fighting with guidance. If you fight guidance, it goes further away. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that there are some whom they read the Quran with a wrong intention, that itself will be a source of their misguidance. Now that is something dangerous because the Quran is full of guidance. How can someone be misguided through it? If they've got the wrong intention, they'll be misguided through it. Like a person who reads the abrogated verse of alcohol, for example. O you who believe, and this is a verse that is abrogated. O you who believe, when you come to salah, ensure that you are not in the state of intoxication. So someone reads the verse and intentionally they say, okay, so that means I can drink, no problem. I'll drink in the morning or I'll drink in the afternoon before Asr Salah and I'll delay my Asr a little bit. What are they doing? Or I'll drink in the night after Isha Salah. They are intentionally misconstruing and misinterpreting and playing a mischief with the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns them. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam tells us, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَيَرْفَعُ بِهَذَا الْكِتَابِ أَقْوَامًا وَيَضَعُ بِهِ آخَرِينَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will lift through this Qur'an certain people. He will lift them very high. Those who read it correctly, those who try and understand it, those who put it into practice, those who take it as a means of guidance and inspiration. Allah says we will lift them very high. And the same Qur'an will be a means of the destruction of some. Those who know it but don't want to put it into practice. Those who don't want to know it. And those who want to misconstrue its verses like the Jews and the Christians and the others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this Qur'an, that we revealed to them guidance, but they changed it. Listen to what Allah says about the Bible. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, regarding Isa alayhi salam, Jesus may peace be upon him. We gave him the Injil, the gospel. In it, there is guidance and there is light. But where is that gospel today? Nobody can come with the original manuscripts, not a soul. And the evidence of that is there is a huge dispute amongst the Christians themselves as to which is the correct version of the Bible. So there are more than 36 different versions of the Bible. In fact, that was the last time we looked at it right now. I believe there is a new version out. So that makes it 37 or even 38 different versions. And people are arguing and debating which is the original script. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us. Regarding the Torah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, we revealed the Torah. We definitely revealed it. In it, there is guidance and light. But subhanallah, today again, it has been changed. It has been twisted. It has been turned to suit others. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns us, the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, saying, never misinterpret the Quran. Because if you try and do that, it will be a means of your destruction. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us understanding. Remember one very important aspect. We read the Quran, it is our duty to read the Quran. Wherever a question comes to our minds, let's not try and answer it ourselves. Ask those who know the revelation. Because there are reasons of revelation of most of the verses of the Quran. At times we don't know them, but the scholars of deen would know them. So you don't just read a verse and start arriving at conclusions. You don't derive and extract rulings yourself. If you have not learnt, you need to have learnt under the tutorship and guidance of a scholar who has also learnt under another scholar, who has also learnt under another scholar until we get to the Prophet ﷺ. That is very important. And this is the difference between the Muslimin and those who are not Muslims. When we get knowledge of religion, it must have a chain. It must have a chain of narrators, a chain of scholars. A chain of scholars that goes right back to the Prophet ﷺ. 
And that is when it will be regarded as authentic. And that is when what we will be holding is actual guidance. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to open the doors for us. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes mention of a very, very serious matter. He says in Surah Al-Zukhruf that sometimes people follow the mistakes of their parents and the mistakes of their forefathers and they stick to it even when guidance comes to them. When the true guidance comes to them, they use the excuse of, you know, our forefathers have been doing this for many decades and they continue doing it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells the messengers and Allah speaks about these type of people in Surah Zukhruf. بَلْ قَالُوا إِنَّا وَجَدْنَا آبَاءَنَا عَلَىٰ أُمَّةِ وَإِنَّا عَلَىٰ آثَارِهِمْ مُهْتَدُونَ Allah says, when you go and call them towards guidance, they will say that no, we found our forefathers doing this and we, we are guided by the path of our forefathers. So Allah asks a question immediately after that. أَوَلَوْ جِئْتُكُمْ بِأَهْدَى مِمَّا وَجَدْتُمْ عَلَيْهِ آبَاءَكُمْ What if we came to you with something that has more guidance than what your fathers had? Would you then follow it? And Allah says, no, they've chosen not to follow it. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's guidance. This verse refers to us as well. Whenever we've seen a culture coming down through the generations, we need to ask ourselves, is it correct? If Islam allows it, if it is within the framework of the Sharia, Alhamdulillah, we may adopt it. But if it contradicts what Allah has said, we need to throw that culture out of the picture. Because many times, many people across the globe have spoiled Islam by adding culture to it. And what culture does, it pins you down to the ground. And it shackles you in the shackles of shaitan. And then... Religion becomes very difficult. You can't move left, you can't move right because of the flavor of culture, not because of religion itself. And this is why it's important to separate culture from religion wherever the culture is against the religion. We are not condemning culture. Culture is something very good, really. We need to be cultural, spiritual people. But at the same time, only the culture that does not contradict what, with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us Muslims in every aspect and in every sense of the word before anything else. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala thereafter speaks about the fact that in the month of Ramadan, it is a very big opportunity for people to turn. We know that. Guidance in the month of Ramadan. Everyone wants to be rightly guided. Everyone's heart is supposed to have softened up. We mentioned a few days ago, and a lot of people actually told me that it was a very interesting point, so let me repeat it. We mentioned a few days ago that when we have a computer, and we have, mashallah, printed a, a whole letter or prepared a whole PowerPoint presentation, and then suddenly we switch off without saving changes. What happens? We feel it, really. We feel we've wasted the whole afternoon. We've prepared so much, and suddenly, when it came to save changes, we were oblivious. We either click no or... The computer was switched off in a rush or there was a power cut. That's what happens to us every Ramadan. We change in Ramadan, we make a lot of effort, we read Quran, we do tilawa, we become better people. As Ramadan comes out, we forget to save our changes. So we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not to make us from those. Really we need to be from amongst those who can become better people. So after Ramadan, we can benefit from what we did in the month of Ramadan. This is why Allah says, when He speaks about the verses of Ramadan in Surah Al-Baqarah, He says, Allah says, He wants you to complete the course. He wants you to complete the entire course of 29 or 30 days. And he wants you to declare his greatness upon the fact that he has guided you. That is why on the day of Eid, what do we say? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar, wa lillahi alhamd. Beautiful words. What is that? That is full, fulfilling the command of Allah that He has issued in Surah Al-Baqarah to say, declare the takbir, the greatness of Allah because He guided you. Subhanallah. So that is what we do. 
So we need to declare the greatness of Allah wherever He has guided us. Let's thank Him. Let's declare His greatness as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us all goodness. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says there are some people whom guidance comes to them. They know it's guidance. They know it is guidance, but they fight it because it does not suit their whims and fancies. Allah says those type of people, they will go to hellfire if they continue in that way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, whoever wants to fight the messenger, whoever wants to fight the messenger when he comes with the truth and with guidance, and he wants to follow a path besides the path of the rest of the believers, he wants to follow a path besides the path of guidance after knowing what is the path of guidance, Allah says, we will do two things. The first is, نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى What is meant by نُوَلِّهِ مَا تَوَلَّى The Mufassireen say, نُزَيِّنُ لَهُ الْبَاطِلْ فَيَرَاهُ حَقَّا وَنُقَبِّحُ لَهُ الْحَقِّ فَيَرَاهُ بَاطِلًا We will turn what is good in his mind so it will appear bad. So he will consider what is good, bad. And he will consider what is bad, good. So he will not be able to distinguish between right and wrong because when the guidance came to him, he fought it. May Allah protect us. And the second thing Allah says he will do is he will make sure that that person arrives in hellfire. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never ever do that to us. I normally give an example and it's something we need to think about. We as human beings cannot tolerate the flame of a candle on our baby finger. We cannot tolerate the flame of a candle on our baby finger. How then are we not shaken when we are being spoken to about hellfire that is 70,000 times hotter than the hottest flame that this dunya and this world can come up with? The lightest of flames of hellfire is more than that. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to protect us all.